Thank you guys so much for coming. Today we're gonna be going over practice. Now, as you guys know, uh, there's two basic, basic subjects with real estate. And I think most of you know this. There's practice and there's principles. You guys get that, right? Now with the Bureau of Real Estate, what they want you to do is they want you to take practice. No ifs, ands, or buts, you must take practice. You must take what? Principles. principles. And the last one, the third, is what? Finance. Well, the third is elective, is an elective. But we're going to go over finance because I believe finance if you're trained in the world of finance, you'll understand why it's so important to know a lender and what the lenders do and what's their impact on the deal. You gotta have a good lender to protect your transaction, to protect the buyers so that the, so that the sale doesn't go south. You get it? You wanna keep that loan nice and strong so your buyer gets his loan, he gets finance, close the deal, escrow's done, you get paid. Today we're doing practice. Practice. And the cool thing about practice, just so you guys know, the cool thing about practice, it's actually one of my favorites. And I'll tell you why it's one of my favorites. Practice in real estate is actually doing the deal. It's working. It's action. You guys get that, right? You get it? That's why the word practice. The word practice means get to work. Start practicing this business. Real estate practice, oh my God, I love it. I love it. This is where the money is made. This is where the money, how many of you here want to make tons of money? No, seriously, how many of you want to make tons of money? Well, get ready to rock and roll. But I want, let me remind you something. Let me remind you something. It's not so hard to do this. Listen, I've done about 325 deals. Not a big deal. No team, no assistance, no nothing. It was flat out good, solid, hard work. It was what I call the two-tank theory. I don't know if some of you guys remember this, the two-tank theory. I want you to think of two tanks. I've been asked many a times, Rico, how did you do it? How did you do it? How did you do all those deals? And I told him, you know, it's very simple. I thought about it, I said, you know what it is? It's what I call the two tank theory. In this tank, I want you to fill it up. I want you to fill it up with knowledge, knowledge education. Fill it up, let it overfloweth. I love saying that word, overfloweth. Is that even a word, overfloweth? Let it overflow with education. Whenever there's a course given or, 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 or a free uh, complimentary training session in your brokerage, wherever you guys decide to work, Take it, learn it, put it all in here. You can do it. Then we got this tank. What is this tank, the second tank? Effort. The second tank is effort. That we can't help you with. That comes from down deep. You guys understand that, right? And I mean it, it comes from down deep. There's nobody to blame or nobody to give, uh, what do you call it, uh, 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 nobody to blame or nobody to praise for your failure or for your success but you. I don't know how else I can present this to you. I'm putting it right here on the platter. It's gonna be all you when it comes to the effort. I can give you tests here, I can give you tests, I can grade you, I can give you an actual grade letter. I can't for effort, you guys understand that, right? It's like a big mystery over here. How much did you work? And when you worked, how much did you try? Was the effort there? With practice, ready, wait for it. With practice, it starts flat out with motivation. Just stick with me, it all makes sense. It starts out with motivation. But I believe motivation is overrated. Yes, I said it. I believe motivation is overrated. I do, I really do. I believe motivation, I, I, for example, how many of you here are motivated to do this real estate thing? Are you really? We're here. We're well, here. That's good, that's a start. That's a start, you're here. But motivation, honestly, motivation is the very beginning. I went to this, uh, to this seminar, you guys know Tony Robbins? Yeah. Tony Robbins, right? Mm -hmm. I went to one of his seminars, I'm not sure if I told you guys this story. I went to one of his seminars in, uh, in Vegas. I went to Vegas, we went, they had some kind of real estate convention thing. I said, I'm gonna go check it out. So we went there, and uh, you know, when you're in Vegas, you're in Vegas, right? You do the Vegas thing. So I'm in Vegas doing the Vegas, Vegas thing. But the next morning, 10 a.m. Is, uh, is, the, is the convention, is the, the big meeting with Tony Robbins, right? At the MGM, massive, beautiful, at the MGM Grand Arena thing. So anyways, that night before I go out and, and do the Vegas thing, show up to Tony Robbins thing the next morning at 10 a.m. and I got the biggest massive hangover headache you could think of. Oh, I remember this like it was yesterday. I said, oh my God, I don't wanna go to this thing. And my head was like, oh. You show up to this place and there's tens of thousands of people in there. I'm like, oh. And then Tony Robbins comes out. Oh, and he does this thing. Have anybody here ever seen Tony Robbins in action? Have you? What'd you think? Well, he's tall. <laughs> but did he, did, he, did he motivate you? Yeah, I think he's, he's, he's a great speaker. Motivated me like heck. His motivation to me was like amazing. Motivated me just to, anyways, within the hour, within the hour, my headache was gone. 
he had us hugging strangers. I'm like, oh my God, life's good. My headache was gone, no more hangover. I said, this is perfect. I was digging a guy. But by the time I got back to my room, I was right back down in the dumps again. So I believe motivation is temporary. You guys understand that? I believe motivation is temporary. I believe after motivation, motivation is simply, simply an introduction to get to work. Motivation is simply an introduction to get active. I want you to remember M, M is motivation. Motivation, and I mean it. This is how you're gonna make it happen. Motivation leads to active, to activity. You get it? M-A. After activity, after activity, I want you to do it all the time. That's where discipline comes in. Now you got motivation, introdu introduction to activity, introduction to discipline. That discipline, you do it over and over and over and it becomes what? A habit. You got it? Motivation will not carry you. Motivation will start you. I thought this out clearly. I said, a lot of people think motivation, motivation, motivation. Let's get me motivated and I feel good. Let's do it. How many of you tried losing, losing weight or, 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 I don't know, some kind of, I'm going to start exercising better, you know, first of the year. What do you call those things? Uh, 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 New Year's resolution, right? Yeah, New, Year's, New Year's resolution, I'm going to start running and that lasts for about a week. How come the gyms are so crowded like the first month of, of the year and then it kind of ta tails off? Because motivations last this long. At least you started it with action. The thing that kills it is what? The discipline. There was no discipline. That's what real estate, same exact concept with real estate. Are you with me? Same exact, and I mean it, same exact concept with real estate. Motivation is just the beginning. I want you to get active. Active, what's the third one? A no, active. I want you to get active, active, and what's the third one? Active. active. That's going to lead to what? Discipline. Does that make sense to you? Listen, I'm giving it to you right here on the platter. Keep that, keep that, that philosophy with you in real estate. And you'll have a nice, long career. Let's get up here. We're going to start with, 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 uh, with any questions with practice. We're going to start with practice. Any questions on, on real estate in general? Why are you guys doing this? Anybody want to share why you're trying real estate? Why do you want to do real estate so bad? Anybody, go ahead and share with me. What do you got? What do you got? I want to make money. You want to make what? Money. Want to make money. It gets deeper than that. What are you going to do with the money? Mm. It gets way deeper than that. Thanks. What's your name? Eli. Eli, it gets deeper than that. What do you want to do with the money? Experiences. Well, like what? <laughs> Don't beat around the bush, Eli. I want to go places and see things. <laughs> you want to travel? I want to go fishing. Nothing wrong with that. Beautiful. That, hey, money will do that for you. I know. Anybody else? What else? Why else are you guys taking this? Anybody want? Independent. What is, independent? You mean your financial independence? Beautiful. Nothing, yeah. nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. What would you do without that money? What do you mean by financial independence? What would you do? What would I do? I don't know. I would support myself. I would support my family. Boom. Love it. Guess what? That's exactly what I did. You start getting these big fat paychecks. Listen, I'm telling you from first-hand experience. You start getting these nice beautiful paychecks and you can actually help family. Oh, I used to love doing that. You would see family in trouble. You can actually go to the bank or, or write them a check, but my family prefers cash. Or go to bank. <laughs> what do I pull out two, three thousand dollars, knock on their door, and put an envelope. And say, Here you go. I can help you out this month. Nice and simple. It's it's a beautiful thing. Oh my God, real estate has. I, I owe real estate so much. This is why I, I treat it with so much respect. And I ask you, when you get into this gig, when you get into this career, and, I'm, and, I, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart, because I've been there, done that, I've done the whole real estate thing. It's now my time to give it back to you. Treat it with respect. Work your tail off. Don't stop at motivation. Motivation is just the introduction. What's going to get you there is activity. That's where practice comes in. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the, to the, to the sessions of practice. You guys ready for this? Yes. Are you sure? Yeah. All right, let's go. All right, we're going to start off with this one here. This is the game what we call real estate. These are actually the characters. I want to make sure you guys understand this. Let's get this thing going. Up top there it says buyers. From now on, when I point back there, who's back there? Who's over here? Buyer. Who's over here? Lenders. Buyer's over here. What does the buyer want in real estate? What does the buy a house? Simple as that. Listen. Ready? Study long. Study, study wrong. wrong. Those of you who are, are here and, and, and don't understand that, study long, study wrong means don't overthink it. It's very simple. A five dollar bill is a five dollar bill. Don't overthink it. Buyer. What does the buyer want? To buy what? Yeah. Buy a house from who? From the seller over there. What does the seller want over there? Money. He wants money. money. And he's willing to give up what for, for money? 
his house, particularly the deed. Got it? The deed. He says, I'm willing to give up this deed here if you give me some money over here. Got it. The buyer doesn't have any money. He needs to borrow it. Where is he going to borrow it from? The lender over there. Let's go visit the lender. Hey, lender, how you doing? Hey, listen, I got a buyer who wants to borrow some money. You mind uh, 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 sitting down with him, having a cup of coffee, and see if he qualifies? Lender does that over here. They have a cup of coffee. They chat. They get, get to know each other. Lender will qualify or approve him or her, and they keep rolling. Buyer wants to buy a house. Seller wants to sell his house. Nice and simple. Real estate agents, that's where you come in. Your job is simple. Your job is to put these two people together. You with me? Your job is simple. Put these two people together. You're going to be the matchmaker. You're going to get them to fall in love. You're going to be Cupid. You're going to get, the, you're going to get them to fall in love. And once they're in a legal and binding contract, once this buyer says, hey, I'm going to shoot you an offer over there, Mr. Seller, and he throws over an offer to the seller, the seller catches it and the seller accepts it, it's now a legal and binding what? Contract. contract. Uh-oh. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's a fantastic thing. It was a trick question. It's a fantastic thing. But now we have to have somebody babysit this thing. We have to watch. We have to have somebody babysit this whole transaction that you just created. Who is that going to be? Escrow. Escrow is going to babysit this thing for the next 30 to 45 days. And their job is simple. Their job is to protect the integrity of the transaction. That's my definition for you. I'm gifting it to you. Escrow job is to protect the integrity of the transaction. Escrow's job is what? To protect, to protect the, integrity the integrity of the transaction. Neutral third party that protects the integrity of the transaction, that's what they do. There it is here. Lender, we discussed the lender. The lender helps out who? The seller or the buyer? buyer. The buyer, fantastic. And then prospect, ooh, this is the new one I put up, I put up this uh, up a couple days ago. I love that one at the bottom there. Prospecting. What is prospecting? That's the activity we were talking about. Prospecting. Finding new clients. Finding new clients. That's the name of the game. Hey, listen, you can be the smartest realtor on earth. You can be the smartest. You can know a contract blindfolded. You can read a contract in the dark. But if you don't have a client, that means nothing. Does that make sense to you? It should. If you keep taking classes and taking classes and taking classes, which is fantastic, and don't spend any time outdoors, who is outdoors? People. People make this happen. You got to start talking to people. If I were you guys, I'd start doing it from now, if you haven't already done it. How many of you have already start, started talking to people and let them know what you're doing? If you haven't, you better get started. You want to take those trips? You want to be financially independent? You want all this stuff? You need to start telling people what you're doing. I was speaking to one of my, uh, one of my uh, well, she's a good friend of mine now. She took this training course about two years ago. She has a full-time job, another full-time job. She called me today. She said she's ready for activity. She's ready for action. She's been actually doing action for the last month or two. She called me today with good news. She got her first listing. She finally got busy and started doing this down here. What is this down here? Prospecting. You got to start doing it. Without prospects, there is no commission. You guys have any idea how much, you guys, how much money you guys can make in this game? Do you have any idea? Do you have any idea? Let me, let, me, let me make it clear for you. Let me seriously make it clear for you. Let's put this in perspective. Just, let's put this in perspective. Let's, let's think uh, the average house in Los Angeles. We're talking West LA. Let's say a million bucks. That sound reasonable to you? No. Million bucks, West LA, million bucks. Typical commission is 2.5%. What's 2.5% of a million bucks? Do the math. 25,000 bucks. Give the broker his cut. Give the broker who, you're, who you are going to work for his cut, walk away with about $20,000. Literally, a check here is 20000 bucks. That's one transaction. Now, you got to ask yourself down deep. This goes back to this effort. This is all you. I'm glad you're here, and this is why you're here, because you're taking this pretty darn serious. Can you do one deal? Let's go worst case scenario. Can you do one deal every quarter, which means one deal every three months? Can you do that? One deal every three months. Does that sound reasonable to you? Yeah. Do the math. I'm just putting it out there. Do the math. One deal every three months. That's four deals a year. That's all, that's all I'm, I'm asking. That would probably change your life. That would probably change your life. Think about it. I can't break it down any more simpler. Is that right? Simpler or simple? Simpler? Simple. Simple. 
All right, let's get going. You guys ready? Let's get this thing started. All right. Prospecting is the name of the game. Here we go. Real estate drives our economy. The U.S. is heavily impacted by the real estate market. How many of you here believe you have a job right now that somehow, some way is related to the real estate economy? What do you got? What do you do? Banking. banking. You guys think banking is related to it? Definitely. What do you got? Banking. Banking also. Anybody else? Interior design. Interior design. Do you think that's related to, to yeah. the? Absolutely. We need houses to design. What about you? I'm a kitchen bath designer contractor. Ooh, wait. Say that. That's a long one. <laughs> <laughs> say, say it again. I'm Kitchen and only kitchens and baths. And designer. Oh, and designer. Yeah. Oh, I thought well, you only. I design kitchens and baths, and I'm a contractor. Got it. But you won't touch the living room or the den. No, I'm not an interior designer. Wasn't the kitchen and bathroom no, interior? I design and sell the kitchen cabinets. Oh, I see. Got you. Got you. Got you. Got you. Got you. Very cool. Very cool. Anybody else? What else you guys do that might be related to real? Now, part two of that question is this: When the economy is pumping, when the economy is good, I'm assuming the economy right now is good. You guys agree? Economy is kicking butt. Real estate is doing fantastic. Are you guys busy right now? Oh, yeah. Is banking busy right now? Ready? Question number two. When the economy is horrible, when the economy is down in the dumps, remember 2007, 2008? Yep. What happened 2007, 2008? Crash. Remember, remember, remember the crash? crash? Remember they were afraid, they were afraid to call it a depression. Remember that? Mm -hmm. But damn, they got pretty damn close to it. What did they call it instead? A recession. Ooh, let's, let's make it pretty, huh? Let's call it a recession. Ooh, that's pretty. Were you, were, you, were you affected by that, by the recession? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you? Yeah. You closed your business. Yes, I had a show. Did you guys listen to that? That's how important real estate is to the nation. Close her business. Well, did it affect your business? Yes. Give me your name again. Ivana. Ivana, did it, it did affect your business. Did it affect the banking business? Absolutely. Did it really? What did it do for you guys? For, was it, for, for your business, for your jobs. Did you lose your jobs? Did you get less? No. no? But the banking industry in general, I well, true that, yeah. That brokers are out of jobs. Yeah, that was a very because ugly, that was a very ugly time for bankers. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it was a very ugly time. So at the end of the game, just to let you guys know, when it comes to real estate, the economy and, and real estate, big time. This affects tons of people and their lives. The recession, are you kidding me? That was a horrible time. How do you think it was for realtors? For agents during the economy? For, during the uh, recession? How do you think that was? Ready? Wait for it. Wait for it. Most agents left the business. Mm -hmm. Those were the best years of my life. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I be honest? Those were the best years. That's when I had the most business. While other realtors were leaving the business because they were afraid of the, all the foreclosures. What do I do? What do I do? Those were the best days of my life. Why? Because I was thinking different, and I'll share that with you later on. It goes back to the two tank theory. We all knew what to do. Not all of us were willing to do it. You got it? We all knew what to do. We all have a license. We all know what to do. Not all of us wanted to do it. You see, everybody typically wants to go after the seller. Where's the seller? Back there. You see, when you get a listing, think about this. When you get a listing, a listing means you're going to represent who? Buyer or seller? seller? Seller. When you represent the seller and you have his listing, Technically, all you have to do is put that listing on the MLS, and we'll talk about the MLS later. The MLS is a big, giant database of houses for sale, right? You take your listing, you grab it, you go home, you go on your computer, you get the listing, you input it into the computer, and you put there, one, two, three, four Main Street, 2,000 square feet, $1.5 million, and you push the big, the big, giant button that says what? Enter, and it goes out to space, and the whole world knows about it. It's out there on the internet. Then you put a big sign in the front yard that says what? Well, no, it says for sale. Yeah. Not so fast. You're quick. Yeah, yeah you're fast. <laughs> you're fast. It says so. It's, now you got me saying it. It says for sale. And again, technically, if you wanted to, you can go home and sit there. You can go on vacation. You can do whatever you want. You don't have to do anything else if that's the way you do business. Technically, all you have to do is put on the MLS, put a sign in the front yard if they let you, and wait for offers to come in. That's the lazy way to do it. And everybody during that time was going after that seller, going after that seller, going after that seller. And I realized something. I said, well, everybody's going after that seller. I can make the same commission going after who? The buyer. The buyer. I'm not sure you got to do a little bit more with the buyer. Hey, buyer, how you doing? Nice to meet you. You want to get in my car, drive around? Yes, I'm going to spend some money on gas. Come on, we'll go spend some time together, have some lunch, go out and see some houses. It might take me one, two, three, maybe four weekends. But once I get them in escrow, and we close the deal, am I getting paid? Mm -hmm. 
ladies and gentlemen, in 2007, 2008, 2009, my wife and I were closing roughly 35 to 40 deals per year. Just two of us. And I would say 90% of those were representing who? The buyer. They make a commission just like sellers do. Do you understand that? Yes. Being, being uh, based on that, well, that's going to come up next. Let's go here. The benefits of real estate career. Why are you guys getting in real estate? Why are you getting involved in real estate? Number one, it's got high earning potentials. We talked about that. High earning potentials. I used to make, as a teacher, I was a school teacher, I used to make $28,000 a year. 28 G's a year. $28,000 a year. And guess what? I was cool with that. I was like, cool with that. I was like, man, I'm making good money. I had three little boys back then. This was in the early 90s. Making 20,000, I got a raise, I got up to 30,000. My goal was to get to 30,000. I got to 30,000, oh, I was like, oh my God, I'm making tons of money, $30,000. And then I got into real estate. I got into real estate. There's times where you're gonna, there's times where you're gonna be making $30,000 per month, per deal. How bad do you guys want this? No, seriously, how bad do you want this? How many of you want a new car, a new house, vacations? Can you taste it yet? Can you taste it? Can you see it? Can you see it? Listen, I've lived it. It's right there for the taking. It's right there. Oh, I'm sorry. Flexibility. You get to work the hours. You're the big boss. You're the boss. You're the boss. That could be a good thing, that could be a bad thing. Because when you're in the boss, uh, who do you call uh, when you want to call in sick? <laughs> yeah, nobody. <laughs> When you, when you want to take vacation, who do you call? Nobody. It's you. Be careful. You might be taking too many vacation days and too many sick days. Huh? Mm -hmm. So this is actually a good thing because it is a nice, flexible, uh, a life-changing status. But it can be a little bit dangerous. Freedom. You have freedom. How many of you right now work behind a desk? My own desk. Oh, your own desk. All right. At somebody else's office? No. At your house? At house. Oh, nice. That's pretty cool. How many, of, how many of you here work in a cubicle? Nobody? When you, when you work at an office desk, you, eight hours a day? What's that face you're making? You don't, yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> 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 you'll be you'll be I hope you have a comfortable chair. Um, do you, I mean, do you, no, seriously, do you like doing that? Oh my God, flexibility, flexibility. With the real estate license, once you get involved in this career, oh my goodness. Say bye bye to those cubicles or to those desks. You can work at your office here at, at, at the broker's office, you can work out of your house. You can work out of a Starbucks, whatever you want. I personally like working where there's a bunch of noise. When I'm doing all my research, all my research on the MLS, when I'm looking up properties for my buyers, when I'm doing research for my sellers, I go sit where there's noise. I, something about noise makes me like, yeah. So I'm sitting there doing my, 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 point is, you can do it from anywhere. It's very, very flexible. Last but not least, the real estate market will provide you with mentors. You guys know what a mentor is. You join a company, let's assume it's this one, you walk in, you're not quite sure what to do, you need some help, they will actually say, hey, would you like to have a mentor? A mentor is somebody who's been doing this a long time or a while, is experienced, and will take you under their wing and show you how the, how the program works. Isn't that nice? You're not on your own. You're not on your own. Nice and easy. Look down here, please. Education. Effort equals an exciting success. Education with effort will take you to exciting success. I don't know how else to tell you this. Some of you here today need a change in your life. I know you do. Some of you here are sick and tired of what's going on with your lives. Listen, I was making $28,000 a year. I was stuck. I thought that was the best it was gonna get. I was happy, but I thought that was the best it was ever gonna get. I would go grocery shopping. This is the true story. I would go grocery shopping and I would never buy the good cheese. Couldn't afford it. Talking about cheese, I couldn't buy the good cheese. I couldn't do it. I was on a budget. If I was to have a thousand dollars in the bank, I was like, "Oh my God, I got money." Thousand dollars in the bank. You guys ever live a life like that? Thousand dollars, three hundred dollars. Oh, I got paid. Now it's seven hundred dollars. Good. Now I can treat myself out to Sizzler today. I'm gonna go Sizzler. Yeah, Sizzler. Right? That's how life was for me. But I didn't know any better. I thought that's the best I was gonna get until I tasted this meal, this, this, this real estate gig, I tasted it. Like, oh my God, oh my God. Then you close your first deal, you want more. You want more. And then you see the faces of your clients, the buyer, hey, here's your keys, buyer. 
and they give you a big hug. Oh my God, Rico, I'm so glad you helped me out. If it weren't for you, oh, thank you so much. I owe it all to you. And all you did was do your work. You just did it with passion. You enjoyed helping them. You get the financial rewards, and oh my God, you go home feeling fantastic. There's a trick, though, or there's a glitch. The glitch is very simple. The only thing stopping, listen, I mean it. The only thing stopping people from success, the only thing stopping people from success, and it's, and it's hard for people to understand this and accept it, it's this right here. That's all it is. It goes back to the motivation, action, discipline. Most people stop at action. They get to it, they taste it, they sweat, they say, I don't like sweating, I'm out. I'm telling you right now, sweating is good. Sweating is good. It means you're working. You do it over and over and over. I had back surgery four years ago. I was sharing this with some of you earlier. I had back surgery four years ago. Are you kidding me? I had to learn how to walk all over again with a walker. Oh my God, it was the most painful thing ever. I'll never forget it. It was in my mind that I was no ifs, ands, or buts. In my mind that I was no ifs, ands, or buts. I was gonna keep walking on that beach like I used to do every morning. But how am I gonna do it if I could barely walk with the walker? It was called, I was gonna do it, no ifs, ands, or buts every single day. And doggone it, I did it every single day. You work and you work till you get better. Same thing in real estate, you work, you work, you work till you get confident. When you get confident, you get comfortable. When you get comfortable, people love you. Commissions, commissions are, are spread out like this. Commission typically is paid by the seller. You guys with me? Seller pays a commission. Typically in a nice balanced market, when the, when the market is nicely balanced, it's 6%. Seller will pay 6% of the list price, or we're going to call it the sales price. Whatever they sell it at, that's going to be the commission, 6% of the sales price. Let's assume he sells it for a million bucks back there. What's 6% of a million bucks? 60,000 bucks. No. The listing agent gets half of it, and he gives the other half to who? The buyer's agent. You guys understand that? Very easy. Seller pays the commission. The listing agent representing the seller gets half of it and he gives the other half to the buyer's agent. Got it? Simple. This would be your example right there. $30,000 total on a $1 million deal for one side only. How would that work out for you? 30 G's. Again, give the broker his cut, you walk away with about $24,000. Not bad. Did that help you out, 24 G's? Oh, yeah. What would be the first thing you would do? Go back to Vegas. Really? <laughs> Hey, Vegas is dangerous. <laughs> Stay away from Vegas. It's funny, that's the furthest place I've traveled east in the United States is Vegas. I haven't gone past, I gotta get out of, I gotta get out of here. I gotta travel, brother. I gotta travel, yeah. The furthest east I've gone in Vegas, I gotta get out of here, I work too much. Um, only problem is this, you gotta give your, you gotta give your broker their cut, of course. So the $30,000, you gotta give the broker their cut. A typical, nice, comfortable, healthy, healthy, reasonable brokerage will let you keep 70% of it and they would want to keep 30% for the brokerage. So at that 70-30 split, at that 70-30 split, you would keep 70% of that $30,000, which is, in this case, I misspoke, in this case it would be 21,000. You get it? That's a nice, reasonable split. If you find a brokerage that gives you anything less, you might want to think about interviewing with other brokerages. Just so you know, 70% split for you is a pretty damn good one. If you guys have been interviewing, I hope you've been hearing this, this number here. All right, here we go. Up top here, areas of brokerage. Here's where it gets interesting. Most of you guys, when you get started, are going to either represent buyers or sellers. Nice and simple. Right now, how many of you guys know of anybody who wants to buy or sell a house? You know anybody who wants to buy or sell a house? No, hi, please. Do you? Do me a favor. Don't lose them and don't let them get away. Get your license. I hope they're patient and they can wait for you. I mean it. You can do this. The good thing is this. They probably, well, obviously, they already know you, right? So they're going to be comfortable with you. We call that an SOI. What does SOI stand for? Sphere, Sphere of influence. People who love you, people who like you, people who don't even like you, but they still trust you. And they'll give you the business. Sphere of influence. Go after the sphere of influence. Why begin with residential sales? I'll tell you why I want you to start with residential sales. My advice to you is start with residential sales. Why? How many of you want to do, a, how many of you want to do commercial? 
Commercial business. You want to do commercial? Really? Nothing wrong with that. You want to do commercial? Well, which one do you want to do? Commercial or residential? Okay. Why do you want to do commercial? I like contracts. I don't do contracts. Oh, you like complicating contracts? Anybody else here like complicating contracts? Anybody, anybody, anybody else here like? It's a bigger, it's a bigger, um, when you get to sell, uh -huh. it's a bigger. Um, Say it. The big word. What is it? Commission. It is. It is. Hold on. We're getting to that next. And you're absolutely right. When it comes to, when it comes to commercial, yeah. when you hit, you hit big like the jackpot. Oh, yeah. When you hit, you hit big. We're going we're gonna to see that in the next slide. However, most new agents start off with residential. Why? Because the contracts are straightforward. Straightforward. A $5 bill is a $5 bill. Study long, study wrong. It is what it is. You read it, and that's what it is. Residential purchase agreement. Residential purchase agreement. What is it? It's a what? It's an agreement to do what? To purchase. To purchase what? A residence. Done. That's how simple real estate is with residential sales. We don't want any loss in translation nonsense. It is what it is. You guys ever heard of natural hazard disclosure? How many of you have never heard of natural hazard disclosure? You should have heard it by now. Natural hazard disclosure. Let's break that down. A $5 bill is what? $5 bill. Natural Hazard disclosure. What is it? It's a Not disclosure. A the disclosure. About? About? Natural. Hazards. Natural. Hazards where? In nature. What kind of hazards are in nature? Floods. Earthquakes, floods, Floods. fire zones. You see that? Simple. Straightforward. Study long, study wrong. Don't overthink it. What you see is what you get. Beautiful concepts and, and residential sales it's simple very simple this is why we do it easier to break into easier to break into and success can be achieved soon due to your soi i just asked you guys here how many of you uh, know somebody who wants to buy or sell you, ever, you raise your hand you're ready to rock and roll you're ready to put them into an escrow and collect your commission that's fantastic i'm so happy for you most new agents can identify with home ownership how many of you here have ever bought a house before fantastic how many of you ever sold a house before there it is. So you know exactly what goes on. So when you're dealing with this guy, who's over here? Buyer. buyer. When you're dealing with the buyer, you know exactly what they're going through. How many of you here bought a house before? What did it feel like for you? Give me one word. How'd you feel like when you bought that house? When you closed the deal, well, give me one word how you felt. Great. Great. Somebody else. What else? Give me one word. What do you got? So exhilarating. Exhilarating. Somebody else. That's nice. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> exhilarating. What? Victory. Victory. Yeah. 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 Anybody else? What'd you feel? Anybody else? Comfortable. You must have had a good agent. Did you? Yeah. Good. You, do you remember that agent? Yes. Good. You, they impact you. They impact you. How about you? Relief. Relief. When you become an agent and you see your clients closing their deals and you hand them the keys, here you go, here are your keys, you know exactly what they're going through. This is why it's nice to go through residential sales. I love it. Now, check these out. I wanted to show you this. Just, it's not much of a tease, but I want you to see what's out there. All right. Hey, listen, closing a $500,000 deal, nothing wrong with that. Closing a million dollar deal, nothing wrong with that. But wouldn't it be nice to close one of the top three most expensive houses in LA? <laughs> Check these out. Right now for sale in LA, if you know anybody wants to buy these houses, make yourself a great commission. <laughs> this is pretty interesting facts. Check this one out. This one's for sale right now, the Playboy Mansion. Did you guys know that? Yeah. For, for, for a mere $200 million. You know anybody wants to buy a house for $2 million? Do, do, what's the commission on $2 million? $200 million. $200 million. What's the commission? Let's assume they're going to pay you 2%. Let's go low. Let's say they pay you 2%. What's 2% of? 20. 20. 20. 2 million. No. 20 million. No, no, no. 2%. Percent, let's, go, let's go low. 2%. 2%. Percent, two percent, let's go 2%. 2% 2 percent, 2 percent of $200 million. 4 million. $4 million. You guys close a deal like this, I'll probably never see you again. How many of you would retire making four million bucks? Seriously, would anybody here retire? You wouldn't? No. Not enough money? No, I wouldn't. You wouldn't? All right. Four million bucks? <laughs> You'll probably take a lot of time off, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of traveling, yeah, for like, for like five years. <laughs> that's a lot of Sizzler dinners, man. <laughs> hey, I like Sizzler. Plug, plug for Sizzler. How about you can sell this one here? It's the Palazzo, the Palazzo di uh, Amore in Beverly Hills. You guys know this one? I have no idea. 149 million. 
On the market now for well over a year, the Palace of Love is the place for anyone looking to accommodate 150 cars. <laughs> you, got car, you got cars? Here it is. Sitting on 25 acres, the Palazzo has a guard house. A guard house, you got a guard. A guard house, guest house, driver's quarters. You got a, you got a driver. Uh, discotheque, how many of you like to dance? <laughs> a discotheque. Uh, a bowling alley, any bowlers here? A bowling alley. Uh, a functioning vineyard, vineyard and, a formal, and formal gardens. This is, this, is, this is too much, this is funny. However, we talked about this in the first five minutes of this session. Motivation is the beginning. What's the second one? Activity. Activity. I don't care if you sell a $200 million house, and I mean it, or a $200,000 house. Stay active. Why? Ready? Wait for it. Here it comes. Wait for it. Whether you sell a $200,000 house, a $2 million house, a $20 million house, or a $200 million house, it's the same paperwork. It's the same contract, same computer, same everything. So if you're gonna sell a $200,000 house and your commission's gonna be a lot smaller, at least you learned something, you were active, and you're a lot more comfortable uh, after you close that deal than you were before. You understand me? Get it? Stay active, stay active. Oh, I don't want to do this half a million dollar deal. It's too small. I only want to take deals that are over two million dollars. What? Take it. Make your ten thousand dollars. The best, the best, best commission you just received out of this deal was the activity. You understand me? The activity. Name it a game. And I and I kid you not. Name it a game. I have sold houses before that were sixty thousand dollars. Do do the math on that. 60,000 bucks was not the commission, that was the sales price. 3% of $60,000 is what? $1,800. Give the broker his cut, I walked away with about 1,000 bucks. The best part of it was it made me a better realtor because of the what? Activity. That's where you get experience. Do it over and over and over. It's the same exact contracts. All right, nice. Check out this one here. Over on Hill Creek, even gave the address. Uh, 1187 Hill Creek. Drive by there tonight if you'd like. 1187 Hillcrest Road over in Beverly Hills. 135 million. You guys know that one? Yeah. Yeah. Do you really? There it is. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the three top, top priced houses in Los Angeles. There it is. These two are in Beverly Hills. This one, I don't know if you guys know where this is located. I actually was, was curious as to where it was located, so I actually, yeah, I did it. I drove by there. I Googled it and drove by there. That's actually just next door to Beverly Hills. Yeah. You guys know where Holmby Hills is? Yeah. You guys ever driven by there? Yeah. I live right near there. Oh, do you? Up in the hills. But yeah. Up in the hills? Yeah. Do, you own, do you own your house up there? Yeah. Do you want to sell it? I, I still do real estate. Yeah, I actually Yeah, I can represent you. <laughs> I, got, I got my card here. <laughs> I still do. <laughs> you don't want to wait that long, do you? No, that's no, good for you. In fact, a lot of people do that. A lot of people get the license, yeah. which is fantastic, yeah. simply to sell their own house. Yeah. Party. Save tons of money. <laughs> Absolutely. Who knows the house better than you do, right? How long have you been there? 20 years. Are you kidding me? You know that like the back of your hand. Yeah, I do. Yeah, how well do you know the back of your hand? You ever look at it before? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, you're, you're the woman for the job. Here we go. Let's keep going. Specialization. All right, so you had just mentioned to me that you would like to do, and you're, also you, Eli, that you guys would like to do commercial. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Big time paydays. You'll be selling things like this. You can, be sell, you can sell doctor's offices, big buildings like this. You could sell commercial like this, you know, the uh, uh, department stores. You could sell apartment buildings. Well, let's assume each one of these is $50 million. That's typically what it is. It's Santa Monica, 20, 30, 40, 50 million dollars. Again, do the math. Let's go low at 2%. Two, 2%. Let's assume they're going to pay you 2%. 2%. What's 2% of $50 million? $1 million. One deal. Ready? Here it goes. You're right. It is a lot of money. The only problem, the only, well, I won't call it a problem. It's an issue. It's, a, it's an obstacle is that when it comes, and I want you to understand this. I don't want you to say, hey, I'm going to do commercial. I'm jumping in. It doesn't work that way. When it comes to commercial real estate, typically, you're part of a big group. It's such a big deal that you're part of a big commercial group. You can't do it yourself. This is a big deal. You have partners involved. Secondly, the cycles on your, on your sales, the activity for sales when it comes to commercial 
are, or let me see if I can say this correctly, are far and few between? Is that the way you say it? Yeah. Far and few between. It might take you a year, it might take you two years to cut your first deal. When you hit, you hit big. But if you don't, you don't. With residential sales, you could pop a deal right away. Some of you here already know somebody wants to buy and sell, which means all you have to do is get your license, take a month to show them houses, or take, take a month to list the house, get somebody who's interested, put them here, who's here? Escrow. What is escrow? A, neutral third party that protects the integrity of the transaction. 30 to 45 days is your typical escrow period. Every day, boom, boom, boom. It's like a, it's like a step in a horse race. Ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. Those days are very important. Time is of the essence. Time is of the essence. And by the 30th day, 45th day, you get paid. Quick. You taste the victory and you want to do what? You want to do more. You want to do more. You want to do more. Huh? Move on to the next one. Move on to the next one. It's tough with commercial. Nothing wrong with commercial, but it's a little tougher. The contracts are a little tougher. It's a completely foreign language. You gotta know some of this stuff. Let me say these words to you and tell me if you know anything about these words. What's here, it's here somewhere, here we go. Internal rates. Oh, you lenders might know this. Internal rates, you gotta know about internal rates. Anybody know about that stuff? How about, oh wait, internal rates of return. There you go, internal rates of return. Capitalization rates, anybody know what that is? Are you familiar with that? Yeah, I don't think so, it's tough. Gross rent multipliers, anybody know that? Look, your face is like, huh? <laughs> you guys have bubbles over your head with a big question mark. What am I, what am I talking about? Uh, and other analytics, that's commercial. I'm not saying you can't do it, you probably could, but it's gonna take you time to learn it. You got it? You want money now? You want money quick? You want money in a non-stress uh, way? Residential sales. I'll do that all day long. I've never even attempted commercial sales. Why? Find somebody over here. Who's over here? Hey, Mr. Buyer, how you doing? I'm so glad you're taking advantage of the interest rates today. They're so low at 3.5%. And you qualify for a loan. We spoke to the lender over there and they said, you're good to go for a million bucks. Let's go find you a house. I find them a house, put them in escrow, I get paid. Hey, seller, how you doing? What, you're moving, to, you're moving to New York? You want me to sell your house? Sure, I'll sign a contract with you. I'll list your house. Absolutely. Is the market hot right now or is it cold? Hot. Very hot. Put his house in the market for a reasonable price, it's gone in 30 days. Much less than 30 days. Make my commission, he moves to New York. Call it a day. I don't need no, no, no rent multiplier. I don't need any of this stuff. I find a seller, I find a buyer, I put them together, give them to who? Escrow, what's escrow? A, neutral third party that protects the integrity of the transaction. Let them take care of it simple as that. Now I'm being honest with you. That's what I would do and I highly encourage you to do that when you first get your license. All right, let's keep going here. Three types of agency relationships. These are the three types of ways you're going to be representing your clients. Number one up top, listing agent. Who's back there? Who's back there? When you represent the seller, you are the seller's agent. You are the listing agent. I want you to remember the word listing. You are the listing agent. Stick with me. Let's assume this room here is for sale. This room is a house and you're gonna represent the owner of this house. You are going to represent this house. You are the listing agent. And you are the only listing agent. You are the only list, you understand that, right? You don't want anybody else getting near this house. This house is all yours. This house is all yours. The only people you're gonna let into this house to see it the is the buyer's agents. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. This is all yours. These are all buyers. How many listing agents are there on a house? One. Typically one. How many buyer's agents can come show the house? Several. As many as are interested. Which means if you have the listing and you price it reasonably, you're pretty much guaranteed commission, aren't you? Mm -hmm. If you're a buyer's agent, are you guaranteed the commission? Nope. Why not? Because you're competing with other buyer's agents. This is why a lot of people like going after the, the listing. But I tell you, so you work a little harder and you sweat. Sweat's good. And you work for this guy over here, the buyer. 
nothing wrong with that activity. You get, you get to go outside and, and drive your car around, put the windows down and put on some, I don't know, what do you like to hear? What do you like to listen to? Uh, uh, J Just, Justin Bieber guy. You drive there, whatever, <laughs> something like that. Is that what his name? I know what you're yeah, and you drive around and you have fun, you know, out in the outdoors. It's fun. Now you have dual agency. You have dual agency. Five dollar bill is what? Five dollar bill. What's the word dual mean? It means two. It means you're going to represent both sides in the same transaction. Ready? Trick question. Here it goes. Is that legal? If you disclose it. Let's, 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 let's take it on the surface. Is that legal? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. If you're sure, say it loud and proud. Is that legal? Yes. yes. Of course it's legal. Of course it's legal. When you represent both sides, remember the split of the commission? 3% there and 3% here? You get the whole, the whole thing. What's 6% of a million bucks? 60,000. You just, you just doubled your money. But can there be an issue? Can there be an issue? Can there be an issue? Now, I have double-ended. We call that dual agency. We call it double-ended. I have double-ended quite a few of my listings before. This is my house. This is my listing. I represent the seller. I am the listing agent. I decide I'm going to do an open house today. I put my, my open house signs all throughout the neighborhood. Sit there on a Sunday afternoon. Turn on the owner's television. Put on the football game on a Sunday afternoon. Make sure the house feels good. Feels like a nice, natural, good, solid home. Buyers walk in, they see it, ah. The buyer walks in and says, hey, I love this house. I think I want to make an offer. Guess what Rico carries with him all the time? His card. Forget the business card, better than that. RPA. A RPA, residential purchase agreement, an offer. Don't leave home without it. <laughs> you like that? Excuse me, Mr. Buyer, nice to meet you. Let me, let me mosey through the house with you. Let me show you the house. You like it? Tell you what, it's your lucky day. I happen to have an offer with me right here, right now. Let's go ahead and make an offer now. It can happen all the time. It can happen. In fact, I encourage you highly that when you do get that listing, take advantage of the listing. Do open houses like crazy so you can double end it. Why not double your money? Dual agency. Look at the corner down here. This is a question for me. Trainer's corner, that's me. What are my thoughts on dual agency? Isn't this considered a conflict of interest? That's a good question. How many of you believe it's a conflict of interest? Dual agency. You don't? Well, it, it can be. It could be. How? How? How so? If you are, if you own the house, or you, and you, you, t you don't tell someone it's yours, or your brother's house, or something, if you don't disclose it, then you get in trouble. You do get in trouble, but how do you feel personally on, on, on this, on dual, how do you feel, how do you feel that an agent can represent both equally? Okay. I don't know. It's, it's, it's been debatable over the years, right? Anybody here feel it's a conflict of interest? Yeah. Do you? Mm -hmm. why, why so? That's tough. You got to get yeah, the most. Get the house as cheap as you can from the buyer. That's a good point. Buy the house in the Good point. Say it again. You got to get what? Got to get the house. As much money for the house. You got to get as much money as possible for the seller. For the seller. Yeah, you got to get the best deal for the, for the buyer. And you're in the middle. Is that a conflict of interest? No. I don't know. Is it? Oh, I love that. Say it again. Seriously, say it again. If you, the, the first one, with integrity. with integrity. Follow it with integrity. How do I feel about dual agency? I love them. I'll do them all day long. I don't see how you can't eth act ethical and still take care of business. I think you can. I think when I ask the seller, hey, let's seller, how you doing? Hey, listen, what would be the bottom line for you? What would be the minimum amount you would want out of this house? If he tells me $150,000 is the minimum he wants as profit, I have to get him what? $150,000. I know that now. Hey, buyer, how you doing? Good. You want to make an offer in this house? Yeah. Well, listen, he won't take less than so-and-so. Like you just said it, you got to find the happy medium. You got to make it win, win. Is that possible? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. In my, in my opinion, absolutely. Some agents won't dare go near this situation. They just won't do it. Oh yeah, they just won't do it. Go online tonight, Google dual agency, and you'll read some articles on other agents who won't dare do it. Say, I'm not doing it. This is a conflict of interest. I'm here to tell you right now, I've done it several times. Never had an issue. You must disclose it though. You must disclose it to your clients. Mr. Seller, how are you? Hey, Mr. Seller, I am your listing agent. Thank you for the contract. I do appreciate it. Hey, listen, I just found a buyer. He came to the open house and we made an offer. 
You're okay with that, right? You have to disclose it. You have to disclose it that you're also representing the buyer. You cannot hide that from the seller. You can't do that. Same thing with the buyer. Hey, let's go, sh let's go see some houses this Saturday. All right, get in the car. You go show him some houses. You show him five houses. And the one he falls in love with, you happen to be the listing agent. Hey, listen, let me show you the fifth house. We're getting tired. We're getting hungry. This is the last house we're going to see. And you show him this one. It's my listing. He's, oh, Rico, I love this house. I said, oh, you know what? I have to disclose it. I'm glad you love it. Let's go make an offer. Just so you know, this is my listing. Do me a favor. Sign this document here stating that I told you that it's my listing and that you're okay with me being a dual agent. Say what you said again, please. That was so nice. Handle it with integrity. Follow the guidelines. Simple as that. Oh, perfect. I'm going to put that on my slides next time. I like that. Yeah. Handle it with integrity and follow the guidelines. That's all you got to do. How do I feel? Double your money, ladies and gentlemen, but do it the right way. All right, per the law, broker salesperson relationship. Per the law, per the law, salesperson is an employee of the broker. When you are working with a client, you are there on behalf of the broker. You got it? When you're, in front of a, when you're in front of a client, you're in front of the client as you, as you as an individual, but you're actually there representing the broker. You got it? When you're there in front of the buyer, you are representing, Kel well, you're there as Keller Williams, or you're there as Century 21, or you're there as Coldwell Banker. You want to make the deal as an individual, but you're there representing a big, fat broker company. You're an independent contractor for the IRS which means you possess a license, you're paid solely on your success, which is your performance, and a written broker salesperson contract exists. Look at that contract there. When you guys get, when you guys join the broker, broker's office, has anybody here have spoken to any brokers yet? Have gone into interviews? Have you? How'd they go? Were they not, were they good, good interviews? Yeah, well, I didn't do any interviews. I did the first thing when Jason could tell Oh, got it. How'd that go? Would it go, would it go okay? Yeah. Good. Yeah, this is the deal. When you finally get your license and when you, what we call, hang it, you hang it with that broker, they're going to have you sign a contract with that broker himself. It looks like this. It's called Independent, independent Broker, Independent Contractor Agreement, ICA. It looks just like this. You're going to sign this. It's going to be between you as a realtor and the broker. And on this form is where you guys are going to negotiate your split. Remember we talked about the 70-30? Mm -hmm. The 70-30? That is going to go on the contract, right here. This will be used, this will be your hiring papers. You are hired, sign here. Hand us your broker's license, your, your real estate license, and they're going to put it away in the file. You're going to carry a small one like this in your wallet, and they're going to carry the nice, beautiful 8x10 one. They're going to put it away. Done. You are now part of that brokerage. 70-30, that's a nice split. That's a pretty good split. Let's keep going here. Factors in choosing a broker. All right, now you got, you got your license, you got to choose a broker. Which one should I pick? I want you to be very, very careful when you pick a broker. Some of you are almost there. How many of you are here believe you are maybe a month or two from getting your license? Really? Boom, nice. Nice. Oh, man, I'm so excited for you. But now is a pretty good time for you to start visiting some broker's offices. You might want to start visiting them. What are you looking for? Training. Number one, I want you to look for good training. If these offices don't offer training, forget about it. There are some offices that they call boutiques. You guys know what boutiques are? Yes. Ever heard of boutiques? Smaller yeah, a little small broker. I used to think boutiques were like where you do your hair and your nails and stuff. Isn't that a boutique also? Or you sell, sell, sell small, clothing. small clothing store, yeah. No? Anyways, they're boutiques and uh, there's no training. They say, come on board, you're hired. Now there's a desk, there's a phone, get busy. That's the training. There's a desk, there's a computer, there's a phone, get busy. That's no training. That's no training at all. You want a company that's proactive. You want a company that educates you like crazy. We talked about this tank. What's this tank over here? Education. Education. You got to fill it up. When they give it to you, take it. Find a company that has good training, good support staff, a great support staff. The more help, the better. Present employees and make sure the present employees are, 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 are seasoned agents and new agents. A combination would be nice. Let's assume this room here is all the employees of this brokerage. Try to have you know, some who have been here for a while, who have been doing this a long time, and some who are new. That way you're comfortable. You can get advice from those who have been doing it a long time, and you'll feel comfortable with those who are 
new just like yourself. You guys with me so far? Nice and easy. These are the kind of things you really want to look for when you, when you select the brokerage. And then of course, last but not least, area of activity. You have to decide, am I going to do sales, uh, residential sales, or am I going to do commercial? How many, how many of you here are planning on starting with residential sales? Yeah, no, I am. yeah now you are. <laughs> 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 now you are. Find a brokerage that's, uh, that seems comfortable for you uh, in general. Walk into that brokerage. Just feel the vibe, man. Feel the vibe. Does it feel good? Does it feel right? Does it feel too dark for you? Is it too quiet for you? Are people smiling? Are people laughing? Feel the vibe. You guys understand by the vibe, right? Make it feel good. It's got to feel right. You're going to be spending quite a few hours. You're going to be me. You're going to be meeting your clients there, offering them coffee. Make sure it's comfortable for everybody. Goal setting. Oh, man. Now we're talking about goal setting. All right, so now you're in the brokerage, you're ready to rock and roll, you want to make your money, you want to get trained, you want to make this happen, how do you do it? Here's where it, here's where it gets exciting. You start setting your goals. You start setting your goals. But there's something tricky about goals. How many of you here have ever, well, I'm sure you have, you've ever had goals and you never quite accomplished those goals? Not because you couldn't, not because you couldn't, but because you, because you were just too darn lazy to do it. Because you were just too darn lazy to do it. Yeah, it happens a lot. This is why goals are very, very, very important. I was managing once, say, another brokerage. I was, I was managing another brokerage once, uh, let's say about 10 years ago. And uh, one realtor came up to me and said, uh, Mr. Rico, can I please get some advice from you? I said, sure, come on in, let's go into my office. Went into my office. She said, I would like to share my goals with you, my, my annual goals. It was January. I want to share with, with you my goals. And you tell me, I want to I know your opinion if you think this is reasonable. I said, all right, shoot, shoot, go ahead, what do you got? She said, well, my goal for this year is to close by myself, to close 100 deals. I'm like, wow. Did you guys just, I just heard you guys laugh. Did you laugh? I did. You did? <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, that's okay. No, that's kind of the inside feeling I had too when she talked. I said, 100 deals, whoa, 100 deals. Now it's great, it's great, it's great to reach for the stars. I get it, I get it. But I'm a man, or I'm a person of possibility and probability. Possibility and probability. And there's a big difference. Is it possible for anybody in this room, possible, is it possible for anybody in this room to be the President of the United States one day? Yeah. It's possible. Is it probable? No. Is it possible to win the lottery? No. Is it probable? No. Maybe a two, two, $2 scratcher? Is it, is it possible to get hit by lightning? No. Is it probable? No. Is it possible to close 100 deals a year? Yep. Here it goes. Is it probable? No. And try telling that to somebody. Of course you have to soften the blow. And it goes something like this. How about reaching for a goal that seems reasonable, that seems realistic? And if you reach it, fantastic, we celebrate, and the next year we go even higher. But to put a goal that's so high that you know darn well it's gonna be impossible to reach, when you don't reach it, how is that gonna make you feel? It's going to make you feel tough. It's going to be so think about your goals. It typically works out this way. Goals must be what you want, not what somebody else wants, what you want. They must be measurable. Measurable means you got to have a number to it. Today I'm going to go door knocking. You guys know what door knocking is? Yeah. Today I'm going to go door knocking. And you take off and you leave your house, you leave the office and you go door knocking and you come back home and you're exhausted and, and, and your spouse says, well, honey, you look so, so tired. And you say, well, honey, I was door knocking all day long. And you know darn well all you did was hit five, five houses, right? <laughs> took you three hours to hit five houses. No, it's gotta be measurable. Measurable meaning, today I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna door knock, I'm gonna hit 50 houses. How many houses should you hit? 50. 51. Today I'm gonna go out and hit 30 houses. How many houses should I hit? 31. 31. That's gotta be measurable. You gotta be able to say, I did it. One, two, three, four, four, you can count them. Today I'm gonna give out my business card to 10 people. How many business cards should you give out? 11. You gotta be able to count it. Not just, well I gave out business cards today. Yeah, what, two? <laughs> you gotta, you gotta have, today I'm gonna have a goal, and the goal is I'm gonna give out 10 business cards to complete strangers. You gotta count them. It's gotta be measurable. Goals must be realistic. Goals can change. Goals should be in the time frame, short term, 
intermediate term, and then long-term goals. Short-term goals lead to medium intermediate goals, which lead to long-term goals. If you want to do 12 deals a year, 12 deals a year, that means one deal per what? Month. Per month, and you break it down that way. Which means if you want to do one deal per month, let's assume you got to knock on, I don't know, 40 doors per, per, per month. How many doors is that per week? 10. 10, and you can break it down that. How many is that per day? Two, and you see how it goes? You got to break it down all the way down to the nitty gritty. It goes here, starts here, and it, boom. Goes here, you got to bring it down, way down here. This is where it's going to start. This is where the, the spark begins and it catches fire. Nice and easy. All right, let's get going. We're almost done with this one. Get Oh, I love this one. Oh, does this look familiar to anybody? First time ever, ever I've included this in my lectures, ever. This is usually my, I came up with this about three years ago and I kept it private, but I think it's important enough for you guys to know. If you want to do good, if you want to be fantastic, if you want to succeed in real estate, if you really want to succeed in real estate, I want you to think rad. I want you to think rad. I want you to think what? Rad. I want you to think what? Rad. What the hell am I talking about? Rad. R. I want you to think reasonable at all times. I want you to think reasonable. You get your license. You get your license. Something's going on in your transaction. Buyer here, sell there, give it to escrow. What is escrow all together? A. Neutral third party that protects the integrity of the transaction. You get your, you're an escrow, fantastic. You're rocking and rolling. You're on day 22, day 23, day 24, day 25. It's going to close on day 30. We're very close to getting this thing closed. You're excited. You can already smell the money, man. You've already spent it. You've already done, already planned what you can do with the money. Yes. And then the buyer starts freaking out. The buyer starts getting cold feet and the buyer calls you and says, hey, hey Rico, you know what? I'm getting nervous. I think I want to cancel this deal. Oh, no. Oh no, he wants to cancel this deal. Does he have the right to cancel? Yes. Does he have the right to cancel? Yes. It's a free country, he has the right to do what he wants to do as long as he doesn't break the law. Sure he has the right to cancel. Do you want him to cancel? No. You didn't already spend the money. You start freaking out. Oh my God, you freak out. Oh my God, what am I gonna do? Oh my God, now you can't sleep. You're, you're gonna start sweating. Oh my God, oh my God, what am I gonna do? I was, I was depending on that money. I was depending on that money, what am I gonna do? I want you to relax. I want you to R, think what? Reasonable. I want you to go home. I want you to find yourself a nice cigar, get a little bit of brandy, put a little bit of Frank Sinatra music on, and I want you to relax, and I want you to think reasonable. How can I fix this? How can I fix this? This is not a big deal. I can fix this. I'm not promoting smoking. I'm not promoting drinking. That's just my way of relaxing. And you gotta fix it, relax, think reasonable. Oh, I gotta think reasonable. Let me contact the buyer. Let me, make, let me have a meeting with him and find out why is he thinking about canceling. He's probably just nervous. There's probably some misunderstanding. He probably has some kind of misconception about home buying. Let me sit down with him and make him feel what? Comfortable. He probably needs one last big fat hug. That's all he needs. You fix it. There's an issue with the escrow. Oh my God, uh, 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 somebody broke into the house you're gonna buy. Buyer's gonna buy that seller's house. Somebody broke into that house and they vandalized it. Oh my God, I guess we gotta cancel the deal. Do we or do we not? No. Are you sure? No. As a new agent, you don't know. You start freaking out. Oh my God, I'm freaking out. What do I do? Oh my God, I guess we gotta cancel. I guess we gotta cancel. Do we wanna cancel? No. no. What do we do? Call the escrow. Go, go in the dark. Oh. Have a cigar. A little brandy. And you think of a solution. I can't think of one. I don't know what I'll do. I'll go to my broker's office and speak to my broker. You think the broker can help you? How about your mentor? Remember the mentor? There'll be somebody who loves you at your office that will give you some damn good advice. You don't lose it. Don't ever lose it. You don't think negative. You think for the solution. You have a cigar and some brandy. Again, I'm not promoting drinking or smoking. That's just the way I, I do it. A, stay active. You want to make it in this business? You got to stay active. You can't sit around at home all day long watching Maury Povich. You are not the father. Can't do that. <laughs> you can't. You're going to have a lot of time on your hands. You can't do that. You got to stay active, and I mean by real estate activity. That's what you have to do. There's three ways to make money in this business. Ready? Wait for it. Wait for it. There's three ways to make money in this business. You can wait for it. <laughs> the phone ain't ringing. You can buy it, which means market yourself like crazy. I used to spend, two, listen to me, I used to spend 2,000 bucks a month advertising myself. That's crazy. But I didn't do it to like my second or third year in real estate. 
Because when you first get started, you're probably on a budget. I remember those days. You gotta join the board, it's gonna cost you. You gotta buy a, a, a lockbox key, a super key. You gotta buy all these little your phones and computers. You're gonna want the best of the best. So easy on the budget, huh? So either you gotta wait for it, you gotta buy it, which I don't recommend by marketing yourself right away because it can be expensive, or you can go out and get it. Good old manpower. Get on your feet, put on your walking shoes, and start doing it. Are you with me? That means start talking to your SOI and to complete strangers. I think SOI though, I think the SOI, I think the SOI is completely overlooked. I think most people get the license and they go straight after the, they go straight after the, uh, the, 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 the stranger. When you got people who love you right here, they might need your business. You overlook the people who are in front of you, which is your SOI. All right, last but not least is D. D is delegate. I want you to delegate. A lot of your work, I want you to delegate. A lot of your stuff, I want you to delegate. Delegate to who? I want you to delegate it to 10. T-E-N, 10. What's T? Title company. What's E? Escrow company. What's N? NHD company. These are the companies that can help you during the transaction. An issue comes up with paperwork, contact one of these, they can probably help you. They're already in the deal with you. You guys know this, right? Who's back there? Yeah. Stick with me, who's back there? Yeah. Who's over here? Wire. Dead center. Escrow. You open up an escrow, and when you open up an escrow, there's gonna be an escrow company involved, there's gonna be a title company involved, there's gonna be an NHD company involved. They're already part of the deal. So when there's an issue with the title, who are you gonna call? Yeah. Title company, have them fix it. If there's an issue with the paperwork, with the escrow paperwork, who are you gonna call? Yeah. Have them deal with it. Don't try doing everything yourself, you're gonna go nuts. Your job is to prospect, prospect, and what's the third one? Prospect. prospect. <laughs> Get out there. Delegate. It took me about five years to learn that word. Five years, I was gonna have a heart attack. Try having, when you have one deal open in escrow, one transaction, it's difficult enough. It's happy though, oh, it's good stuff. It's like a, it's like a fun, it's a, such a thing, it's like a fun, fun fear. Even, isn't that weird? It's like a fun, nervous. It's like nervous, but, you're, but it's fun. But it's, it's like a roller coaster, huh? Like a roller coaster. It's like, oh my God, what's next? Just with one. There was a point where I had uh, approximately 10 deals at once. 10 deals at one time in escrow. Each escrow is like a baby. Hey, escrow, how you doing? Can you please watch this baby and babysit it for me, please? If there's anything you need for it, anything you need, just let me know, okay? But I trust you're going to do your job with my baby. Good and they're gonna babysit for you. Try giving them 10 children. If I, was, if I was to take care of my 10 children alone, I'd go nuts. Use them. They wanna help you. Now why do they wanna help you? Because they make money. Because they make money and they're hoping that one day you use them again. Use them. You wanna make it in this business, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna give you a gift. The gift is red. I want you to think what? Reasonable. I want you to stay what? Active. I want you to get help and do what? Delegate. Delegate to who? 10. Who's T? E. N. Done. My gift to you, you're welcome. I love this. I love it. My pride and joy. Let's keep going here. Daily plan and balance is how you should be balancing your life. Well, your, your time with real estate. You got A time, which is the best time. A time is the best time. A time is when you're making presentations, you're in front of somebody doing a deal. That's A time, which is good time. B time is prospecting. B time is trying to put somebody, a prospect, into A time. So it goes B time, trying to go into A time. Then you got C time. C time is you going out and learning the field, learning the business, previewing properties, taking courses, additional training. That's C time. This C time will help you getting prospects, and the prospects, of course, you want to get them into an escrow. Then you have D time. D time is spent for personal items, family time, hobbies, groups that you're in. D time, personal time. D time is what? Personal time. D time is what? Personal time. I want you to look at this quickly, por favor. Take a look at this. There's one regret I have in my real estate career. There's one regret I have in my real estate career. I got so caught up with A time and B time, 
I got so caught up with A time, B time, and C time. I got so caught up in A time, B time, and C time that I forgot a D time existed. <coughs> I forgot there was a D time. I forgot about my own family. Now mind you, when I first got started, my kids were this small. I got so addicted to real estate that I was putting my kids aside. I was spending eight, nine, 10 hours a day out in the field, finding clients, showing, out my, showing houses to my clients, selling houses out in the field, and I wouldn't see my kids at all. Before you know it, five years went by and my kids went from here to whoop. When the hell did this happen? <laughs> Only regret I have. I didn't spend enough time with them. All I'm asking you is to consider your family when you get started. Because to get addicted to real estate, trust me, once you get that license, you're going to get addicted. Anybody here ever been on the MLS? Mm -hmm. Have you? Yeah, look at that big smile. I check it all the time. You check it what? You check it all the time and you don't even have, you don't even have a license yet. Are you, are you having fun with it? I do. You do? I do have fun. It's, it's, it's addicting. It's fun. What do you look for in the MLS? I look for good deals. Yeah? Yeah. For who? For you? For me. Yeah. So I want to buy it's, deal it's, 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 it's addicting. Anybody else ever go on the MLS? Have you, have you gone on it? No. How is it? It is addicting. It is addicting. Yeah. I wonder what's the most expensive house in Santa Monica. I wonder what's the most expensive house in Culver City. I wonder what's the most expensive house in, in, in you know, here and there. Yes. I wonder what the price is going for here in Manhattan Beach. It's, it's, it's addicting. Be sensitive to your family, huh? To your family time. You should have a spiritual, spiritual time, time for your health, time for your family, all that good stuff. You deserve to be strong, have a strong core. Think about that. That's the only regret I have. I spent my whole time on, on A, neglected D. Let me give you a question right here. Nice question. I'm going to throw it out there. Ready? Here it goes. You got your license. You're rocking and rolling. This is a good question. You're rocking and rolling. You got your license. You're feeling good. You're pumped up. You've closed a couple of deals. You've closed three, four, five. Yeah, you closed 10 deals. You've closed 10 deals. You have a daughter. Anybody here have a daughter or a son? High school? No. Anybody have a high school kid? High school? No? Anybody have a all right, seventh, eighth grader? Anybody have anybody who's going to graduate soon? Let's pretend you do. It's graduation day. <laughs> You show up to their graduation, and here they come. Dun, what's the, dun, dun, that's getting married. What's the song? How's the song go for graduation? Dun, 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 dun. No? no? no. Ah, darn it. Graduation. Yeah, the graduation song comes on, right? Dun, dun, dun. No, that's, that's the army. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. All right, so the graduation, they go, and they're happy. Yay, and they throw the hat up in the air, and, and they find you in the crowd, and you hug them. Oh, honey, I'm so proud of you. Let me take you out to dinner. You take them out to dinner to the fanciest restaurant in Beverly Hills. Uh, not Sizzler. Take them out to, to, to the restaurant in Beverly Hills, and you're there, and you're having a good time with you and your spouse and your, and your daughter who just graduated high school, and she's ready to go off to Stanford, and your other son's there who's seven, eight years old, and you has a family, and it's been a while, and then uh, you're having a good time, and then your phone rings. And you look at it, and it's, it's a client. What do you do? Difficult. What do you do? Anybody care to share? What would you, what would you do? Not have kids. You've closed, not have kids. <laughs> That's a good one, not have kids. <laughs> what would you do? <laughs> what would you do? That happened to me all the time. What would you do? What would you do? You would take the call. I'd take the call. Anybody else? You would take the call. Anybody else? What would you do? Learn to be disciplined and have a plan, like a time frame, and that's it. But get what you need done. I like that. Uh, can you explain yourself more? What would be your game plan? What time would you, would you, I'm assuming you would say you would cut off the calls at a certain time? All right, I'm assuming you would cut off your calls. Analyze what type of call it is, and you should have a little plan set. What, what type of call it is? What type of call it is? Well, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a client. It's a client, maybe it's... Okay. That's the whole idea, I'll it's a client. Call, I take the, I'll let the client know, listen. Uh -huh. But you are important. It's a three million dollar. It's a three million dollar deal. What would you do? You gather yes, hold on, give me. Uh huh. And write it down and say I will call you back at this time. Okay. When you have time. What do you got? For each situation is different. I'm taking the call, but I'm going to assess the urgency of the situation. Let's assume it's an urgent situation. It's urgent. Are you going to pull yourself away from your from your party? Uh -oh. One time graduation going off to Stanford. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. I'm, there, there, is no right, there is no right or wrong answer. I'm just wanting to let you guys know, uh, welcome to real estate, huh? It's your choice. <laughs> now let me share with you what happens to me. 
after your 10th deal, 12th deal, 15th, 20th, 25th deal, it was happening to me every day, a lot, to the point to where my kids were, as soon as my phone would ring, and my kids were with me, they would look at me and they would give me these eyes like they wanted to kill me. Mm -hmm. You know those eyes? When they roll, when they roll your eyes, they're like, how do you roll your eyes? How does that work? When you roll your eyes at somebody, they, would, they knew how to do it well. They would roll their eyes and then they would just kind of walk away. That's when I knew. What am I doing to myself? What am I doing to my family? My kids are now rejecting me. I was picking a phone over my children. Think about it. Just think about it. Now when you first get, hopefully, well not hopefully, some of you don't have children, pick up the phone all day long. Pick it up if you got food in your mouth, I don't care, just pick it up. But there are ways, I like what you said, there are ways to manage it reasonably. You can leave a nice voicemail that says, unfortunately I'm not able to pick up the phone right now because I'm doing something uh, you know, important, yada, yada, yada. You, know, you can pick it up and like you said, assess the situation and explain to them what you're doing. Can you please call back? Sure, those are all reasonable answers. But just get ready for those type of situations. It happened to me all the time. It happens so often, like I said, my kids are ready to react. As soon as it rang, they already knew, dad's gotta go to work, dad's gotta go to work, dad's gotta go to work. I now, at this time of my life, well, this started about five years ago, where I said, you know what? Nobody gets between me and my family. At this point in my life, but I've been doing this a long time, I could say, family comes first, and I love it. There'd be no other way for me right now. But when I first started, I was hungry as heck, and nobody was gonna get in my way. After all, when you make tons of money, who do you spend it on most? <laughs> your family, your kids. Hey, my kids didn't miss a beat. They got everything they wanted. So I was working for them, but what they really wanted was my, my time. My time, yeah, yeah. Sounds cheesy, but that's the truth. Additional prep, be ready, learn your inventory. You gotta know your areas. How many of you here, uh, I don't know, are from this area? What area are you from Santa Monica? What are the areas are you guys from? Uh, San Fernando Valley, you know, do you know the valley? Yeah. What part of the valley? You know that very well? Nice, you get to know it well. Get to know Santa Monica well. What other areas are you guys from? Sherman Oaks, you know it well? Eh, we get to know it better. You can't handle it like this. Yeah, when your buyer asks you, do you know Sherman Oaks? And you say, eh, <laughs> da, da, da. yeah, you're fired. Anybody else, what do you got? Pas South Pasadena, that's pretty far. You came from far. I did. Yeah, you know it? Yes. How long you been there? Five years. Good, know it, like the back, you know the schools there? Pretty well. No, we don't want to hear pretty well. Get to know the schools there. Get to know the school, and I mean it, map, do a map, and know everything about that place. You get a client who says, I want to buy a house in Pasadena. Show me the best schools. Where are the best schools? What street is it on? Boom, it's over there. Is it a public or private? Is it a high school or is it a bit elementary? Where's the nearest shopping center? Where's the nearest hospital? Know the areas, the inventory. Know what kind of houses are for sale there. What are the prices going? You think, you think, you think Santa Monica has the same prices as, as, I don't know, San Fernando Valley? No. Of course not. Maybe three times, maybe four times. Actually, about four times. Yeah, four times as much. So get ready. You got to pick an area you want to work. You want to sell, remember, it's the same paperwork. Well, since it's the same paperwork, you want to sell in San Fernando or you want to sell in, I don't know, Beverly Hills. Just make sure you know it well. Know your area as well. Uh, understand office procedure, of course. Make sure you understand the, the culture and the environment of your broker, brokerage. Be computer literate. Anybody here not know how to use a computer? Good. Have basic, a little bit of tax knowledge when it comes to property taxes. Typically, property taxes are how much? Does anybody know? One and a quarter percent. Keep it at one and a quarter percent. Uh, and then have the equipment for success. What's the equipment for success? Anybody know? It's right here. Anybody? I'll go like this. Instead of asking, does anybody have a phone? I'll ask, does anybody here not have a phone? Everybody has a phone? Anybody have a flip phone? Somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, nah, with you. No. no, my mother still has a flip phone. <laughs> Crazy, huh? A computer helps uh, to gather uh, MLS data, download zip forms. Zip forms is where you're going to get your contracts. Anybody here not have a laptop? That might be a, a good one. Anybody here not have a laptop? Everybody has a laptop? Oh, good. If you don't, you might want to invest in one. I think nowadays they go for a couple hundred bucks, brand new, 250 ish at Best Buy. I'm not, I'm not kidding. I've seen, oh, yeah, I've seen them. Yeah, brand new, that's 250 Yeah, they're not Apple, but they're good enough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a scanner or a fax machine, do you guys remember what fax machines were? No, don't Do, we don't. It's all online now. It's all, right, yeah. that's what I'm saying. I was seeing if you guys know fax. Now you can scan them. Use a scanner to get rid of all your, all your, uh, uh, your offers out. A website to promote your listings, of course, and a vehicle. How many of you here do not, does not have a car? You guys have a car? Good? All right, question number two for the car thing. And be honest with yourself. 
If I was to get in it right now, you're going to drive me around right this minute. Am I going to be a happy camper as a buyer? Yes. yes. I am? Yep. Yes. There's no garbage in the front seat? No. You don't use the front, the passenger seat ground for all your trash? I used to. Yeah. Then I got married. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get ready for kids. And you don't want kids. I mean it. I learned this uh, from, from a good friend of mine, Chuck, who was a great manager realtor many years ago. He said, <clears throat> make sure that your car, on the days of showing, make sure your, car, your cars are always, always, always clean. Keep them clean at all times. Not just the outside, particularly the inside. And I think you know why. <clears throat> Let's keep it going here. Here's the MLS. If you guys have ever heard of the MLS, it stands for Multiple Listing Service. This is where you're going to gather all of your information, all of your research. Who's over here? Buyer. Who's over here? Buyer. Buyer says, please, Rico, find me a house in Santa Monica. I go straight to the MLS and I plug up here, Santa Monica, the area, the price range. What's your price range? He says he wants a house in Santa Monica for under a million bucks. What do I say? Ha, ha, ha. Ain't happening. <laughs> no such thing. How about 1.5? Maybe. I plug in here 1.5 or less. I plug in all the stuff here that, that he's, he's, he's requesting, three bedrooms and two baths at least. I plug it in here. I push enter, and the MLS will pull up all the houses in Santa Monica, three bedrooms, two baths, under 1.5. If there are any, it'll pull it up for me. Let's assume it pulls up three. Guess how many houses I'm showing on Saturday? Three. three. You got it? This is the best tool that you're going to have when it comes to your career. If you don't have this, I don't see how you're going to work. It's like a plumber without tools, and I mean it. It's like a golfer without golf clubs. It's like a, it's like a construction worker without a helmet. It's like, a, it's like a race car driver without a car. It's like a, give me some other ones. A painter like, without, a, a, painter without a, a can of paint or without a paint canvas. Anybody else? Be creative. Anybody else? It's like a clown without nose. nose. There you go. Scalpel. Surgeon without a scalpel. You need this. This is your number one tool.